Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green proliferate deck built around Zigana. After uh, playing with it in a draft, I figured maybe this is a, a pretty good card in this kind of mono-green Yorvo proliferate deck that I had built before. And uh, yeah, I've been pretty impressed with the inclusion of Zagana in this deck so far as a 4-mana 4-4. Four, four. And when Zagana enters the battlefield, if you control another creature with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, draw a card. And then it's also 6-mana to adapt 4 to put 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And each creature you control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it has Trample. And that's also a very important part here, since sometimes you'll have this giant Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrig which can accumulate more counters the more green creatures we play, but then the opponent can just chump block it with a uh, Cauldron's Familiar, and then you're not really making any progress. But if you have a Zagana in play, then all of a sudden your Yorvo tramples, and uh, the opponent can no longer chump block with something like the Cauldron's Familiar. And then of course uh, it's also just a decent card as it replaces itself, can uh, potentially turn into a huge threat by itself. So it does a lot of neat things. The cost of including Zagana in this mono green deck, of course, is that we need to play some dual lands. We also have a one of islands in the deck that we can uh, search up. So sometimes we'll have a hand with an island and a Yorvo, which can be a little awkward. So it's not like uh, it's all upside to playing Zagana, but for the most part, I think it's worth the inclusion. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck here. At one mana, we've got the full playset of Pelt Collector, the only one drop in the deck, and without once upon a time in standard anymore, we're not always going to have it turn one but it's still uh, great when we do, as it can grow over time as we play larger creatures, and of course has those plus one plus one counter synergies as well. Then we've got the full playset of Growth Chamber Guardian, because this deck is also a Great Henge deck, and Great Henge synergizes very well with the Growth Chamber Guardian, as we can put plus one counters on it, and search up additional copies without having to spend any additional mana. Of course, it's just a great card by itself as well. And then we also have the full playset of Barkhide Troll as a two mana 2-2, two -two. comes with a plus one plus one counter on it, so it's essentially a two mana 3-3, three, three, that can also gain Hexproof. Then we also have the full three copies of Voracious Hydra, plus one in the sideboard, because we are playing the full four copies of Vivian Arcbow Ranger, which can also search up creatures out of the sideboard. So this deck is built for best of one, but we have a sideboard because of Vivian. So we've got three Voracious Hydras in the main, one in the sideboard. The sideboard Voracious Hydra is not too relevant, but uh, we're playing three in the main, could potentially go up to four. It's definitely not an incredible card in this deck, since we're not a typical green ramp deck, so we can't make a ton of mana, but it does synergize quite well with the deck, as it's a creature with plus one plus one counters, and green doesn't get a ton of removal, so Voracious Hydra can help us take out an early Edgewall Innkeeper, for example, which can be a problem. And in the late game, if we do happen to stick in this, of course, the giant Voracious Hydra can help us close out the game. Then we also have the full playset of a Yorvo. This is also one of the build around cards in the deck. Comes into play with four plus one plus one counters on it. And whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under our control, we can put an extra counter on Yorvo. And then if that creature's power is somehow greater than Yorvo's, we can put an extra counter on it. But I don't think I've seen that happen yet. Then we also have the full playset of Evolution Sage, which further plays into the proliferate theme of the deck, since we have all these plus one counters, we even have some planeswalkers that we can proliferate onto. And uh, the addition of the second color also brings with it the addition of Fabled Passage, which is great with Evolution Sage, as we can potentially trigger the uh, proliferate from Evolution Sage twice in the same turn, which is great, and uh, just gives us another nice three mana play that plays well with the rest of the deck. Then at 4 mana we've got a playset of Zagana. of course Zagana and Yorvo are both legendary, so there is a bit of a drawback to having multiples, but for the most part if they go unanswered they will win the game, so we can just uh, play the extra copy if the opponent answers the first one. And then we also have the full playset of Vivian Arcbow Ranger, which is also amazing in this deck. The plus one lets us distribute two plus one plus one counters among two target creatures, and they also gain Trample until end of turn, so further gives us more Trample alongside Zagana to make sure that Yorvo can be chum blocked. And then if we can spread around those counters, we can also take advantage of those with the Evolution Sage, so we can keep proliferating onto multiple creatures. Then the minus 3 is similar to Domri's Ambush, where target creature we control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker. And then the minus 5 lets us choose a creature card we own from outside the game, 
meaning our sideboard, reveal it and put it into our hand. We're not often going to use the minus 5 since we're often better off just plussing the Vivian instead and adding more counters to our creatures, but every now and then we need to deal with an opposing permanent that uh, our creatures can't handle, for example an opposing Great Henge or some other powerful artifact or enchantment, and then Vivian's minus can come in handy. Every now and then we can just win the game on the spot with Vivian's minus as well. If we search up something like an Andre's Forerunners, or um, if we already have Trample, maybe Ronos can also be good enough to end the game. So we've got a lot of options in the sideboard, we'll go over those in just a second. Then at 5 mana we've got two copies of Nissa who shakes the world, a great individual card, but also a lot of synergy in this deck, as she places plus one plus one counters with the plus one ability on her land, so those can also be proliferated with Evolution Sage, and they can also gain Trample from Zagana, and of course if we get to untap with Nissa, we can potentially unload a giant Voracious Hydra onto the opponent, and then uh, if we ever get to proliferate onto Nissa a few times with Evolution Sage, it's also easier to get to the minus eight ultimate ability to win us the game, and just a great card to potentially recover from sweep effects, a great against the more controlling decks. And then we have three copies of the Great Henge, which is another very important card in this deck, costs X mana less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control, so works quite well with an early Yorvo or Zagana making it cheaper. And then taps to add double green and we gain two lives, a nice source of life gain as well, which can be useful in some matchups. And whenever a non-token creature enters battlefield under control, put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card. So great synergy with our entire deck, as placing plus one counters on our creatures is great with proliferate. And also great synergy, of course, with the Growth Chamber Guardian, as we don't need to adapt the Guardian to search up additional copies. If we have the spare mana, we still have the option of playing Growth Chamber Guardian, and then with the Great Henge trigger on the stack, we can still adapt the Guardian, so it picks up those two counters from adapt, before picking up the counter from the Great Henge, so we're left with a 5-5, instead of being stuck with a 3-3 that we can no longer adapt, as it already has a plus one plus one counter on it, so that's also an important interaction to keep in mind. And uh, yeah, just another nice card draw engine to complement our Zagana and our Planeswalkers to kind of pull ahead in those more grindy matchups. And then the mana base is uh, pretty simple. We've got the full four copies of Fabled Passage, which as we mentioned has great synergy with our Evolution Sage. We've got one island to search up. And then uh, the rest of the deck are all green sources, so we hopefully don't run into a situation where we can't cast Yorvo because of our mana. Also two copies of Castle Garenbrick, which can help with a big Voracious Hydra, for example. Or if we want to play and adapt uh, multiple Growth Chamber Guardians in the same turn. Then 11 Forests, the full four Breeding Pool, which also counts as a forest for the castle. And uh, two copies of Temple of Mystery, since we don't have a ton of one mana plays. So sometimes playing this tapped on turn one to improve our draw steps is fine. And uh, otherwise just helps us fix our mana, so we have enough blue sources to play Zagana, while having all the green sources we need for Yorvo. Then taking a look at the sideboard, of course this is very customizable, and for the most part you're not going to need a whole lot of sideboard cards. So if you do take this to a best of three, you can easily just uh, have a normal sideboard with maybe one or two cards you can search up with Vivian, since for the most part you're happy just using the plus one. But uh, some cards to point out here, we've got the Borrower to potentially bounce stuff, although the double blue to cast a Borrower is not too easy. We've got the Loaming Shaman against Graveyard decks. Brontodon is one of those cards that you might want to search up sometimes to answer an early artifact or enchantment that can give you trouble. Then we've got the Questing Beast if we're ever playing against some sort of weird fog deck or if we need to attack a Planeswalker down right away. Then we've got a Shifting Ceratops against Counterspell decks. Frilled Mystic if we just want to secure the win and grab our own Counterspell. Biogenic Ooze can also get out of hand and has great synergy with Evolution Sage as it uh, places a bunch of plus one plus one counters on our creatures. We've got uh, Cavalier of Thorns, if we just want some reach, we have a God Eternal Ronas, which especially in combination with Trample from Zagana can help us end the game by doubling the power of our creatures. We've got a Rolask, which I sadly couldn't fit into the main deck, but of course it is nice in theory, as a nice blue-green beatdown creature that proliferates and puts counters on stuff, but overall Nissa is just better. And then uh, we've got an Agent of Treachery, which is usually just better than Meteor Golem, as we get to steal the opponent's permanence uh, that can give us trouble, so kind of the upgraded version of Thrashing Brontodon in the late game if we have enough mana. Of course we do need double blue as well. We've got a Thorn Mammoth, which can fight a bunch of stuff. We've got the Forerunners as kind of the bigger version of Ronas, although sometimes Ronas can still be better. And then uh, the extra Voracious Hydra we mentioned, and the Hydroid Crisis if we want to gain some life while putting a big beast into play. So yeah, that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Pretty sweet hand. This is kind of the perfect curve, if we can draw a fourth land 
Then we've got one, two, three, four. Well, we were on the play, we've got kind of the perfect draw here. Looks like we're up against Jeskai Fires. Well, at least Yorvo doesn't die to Deafening Clarion. But a Clarion would still be very effective killing two of my creatures. Yep. Well, they had the thing they needed. But uh, our hand kept developing and we've got some nice ones left over here. No fires of invention. Prison realm instead. But they seem dead here. Nissa make a 3-3. Hit for 7. Well, that was the absolute perfect draw. One, two, three, four, five. And on the play as well, so not much they could do. Alright, on the play, and yeah, the sand seems totally fine. Turn one, Pelt Collector. Turn two, Tap Land plus Pelt Collector. Turn three, Yorvo. Hopefully turn four, Zagana. We only have the one one drop in the deck. Losing once upon a time makes it a lot less consistent at having it uh, on turn one, but uh, when we do, it's definitely very strong. Of course, Breeding Pool counting as a forest for Castle. Opponent gets an island, back up Sigana. Not sure what we're up against. Blue white. All right. And smash. And if they counter my first Zagana, we've got a backup. The fairy bounce Yorvo is also not too effective. Midnight clock instead. Well, that's actually kind of scary, because that could imply they can play a time wipe next turn, clearing the boards a turn sooner, which definitely matters here. But I'm still going to play Zagana, since at least it replaces itself, gets in a bit of extra damage. So, yeah. Also, an important interaction to point out, if you've got a 1-1 Pelt Collector and plays a Ghana, you're not going to get to draw the card, even though the Pelt Collector eventually ends up with a plus one plus one counter. Because uh, you need to have the plus one counter in play already. Do we have a time wipe? We do. Well, it's what we wanted to avoid. But our point is at four, so we just need like one creature to get across the finish line here. How about a Nissa? That's pretty good. And that's where Nissa has often come up uh, pretty clutch, is to recover from a sweeper effect. And hopefully that does it. Can beat another time wipe. I guess, let's see, six mana, no Agent of Treacheries. Finally, all right, that's pretty decent, making four tokens. Let's see if the Trample from Zagana can make a difference. Yeah, opponent's got eight toughness, I'll have nine power of Trample. So Zagana, pretty clutch here as well. Behold, 
And that does it, so every single one of our cards playing a role here. And yeah, Zagana once again also being pretty key. Alright, this is a bit of a slower draw, no Pelt Collectors, but we can't always have Pelt Collector in our opening hand, of course. Still a definitely a keepable hand, we're on the play. We get to curve 2, 3, 4, 5 maybe. And I um, think we'll just fetch a forest here. We've got our blue mana. Just want to make sure we can go 2 into 3. Alright. And Cauldron Familiar is another reason why Zagana could be strong. Giving our giant green creature Trample to trample over the Familiar is pretty key as well. So another reason why I like the inclusion. I guess I'm just gonna not play Pelt Collector for now. Sure. If they want to kill Guardian, that's fine. Can adapt, can play Yorvo. I guess I'm okay with the trade. Or am I? Guardian can become a 4-4 next turn, or I can just play a Yorvo. But of course then, if I block Butcher, then they can kill my Guardian, unless I adapt. If I just adapt Guardian and they kill it with, let's say, Murder Rider, then I'm gonna be taking more damage from the Butcher. I could go either way here. If I take it, then I probably should just adapt Guardian, stay back, instead of playing Yorvo. But maybe that's okay. Because I want to get the extra Guardians before I trade, basically. And I'll just adapt now, so they can kill it in response. And now if I trade, it's not so bad. But of course my opponents could still have another removal spell. And then uh, the Butcher keeps growing. I mean, could block the Familiar. They get to draw cards. This grows up to a 3-3. Difference between a 2-2 Butcher and a 3-3 isn't huge, since it still just trades for a 4-4 creature here, and we've got two of them. Um, if I draw land and I trade here, then I can't use Vivian to kill Reaper, whereas if I block Familiar, I can. So I think I'm okay with this block, weirdly enough. If they didn't play Reaper, then maybe I would have been okay with the trade. Alright, missing land drops isn't great though. Now I can go Pelt Collector into Growth Chamber Guardian, have a couple 2-2s. Two Hopefully we can just trade for Butcher with uh, Growth Chamber Guardian and take it from there. Alternatively, we can play Yorvo. I think I would rather get Pelt Collector out there first. That way, if I trade my Guardian for the Butcher, the Pelt Collector also grows. They could also decide to kill my 2-2 Guardian, but... That's a fine exchange for me, since we've got a ton of action in hand. Don't really have time to adapt more Guardians. I mean, once again, I could just block the 1-1 Butcher, let the 4-4 get a counter, but then we're... maybe letting things get out of control. So I can block here, just trade this or this for the Butcher, let this become a 2-2. And then uh, take it from there. Seems okay. Because I would much rather hopefully draw land, kill Reaper and then make trades instead of trading with the Reaper in play. Alright, opponent had a tough choice here. They decided to go for the Growth Chamber Guardian. Still no lands. If I play Yorvo then Pelt Collector also becomes a 4-4. And then I can just put my Growth Chamber Guardian in front of Butcher if they attack. Maybe that's the play. Whereas if I adapt here, I've got a 4-4 and a 3-3. I mean, I can still just put the 4-4 in front and I get to kill the 4-4. I'm left with a 4-4 Pelt Collector. But I guess in the other scenario, 
I'm left with a 3-3 Pelt Collector and a 4-4 Yorvo. I think Yorvo is better here. Could technically send Pelt Collector here. I guess it's fine, and then just keep Guardian back to block. If they kill this, then I can still decide to block with Yorvo. And I do want to kind of punish them for losing life to the Reaper. We'll see how this plays out. Hopefully we can draw a fourth land here at some point to jam Vivian. Sends both. Interesting. Yeah, these Butchers are making for some pretty interesting choices. Could just put Yorvo in front of Reaper, take two. Could put Yorvo in front of Reaper, Guardian in front of Butcher, but then they get to finish off Yorvo as well. So I might just stick to the plan, just put Guardian in front of Butcher. Think that's okay. Yeah, they could have an Amber Cleave here. Uh, I don't necessarily associate my opponent's deck with Amber Cleave. They seem more like the Rakdos Sacrifice deck, which doesn't play it. But it's, of course, always a possibility. We'll try this. Alright, so we're down to 8, opponent down to 10, got a couple 4-4s four in play. Both players kind of stuck on lands here, struggling to empty their hand. Although my opponent does have land 5. Still no 4th land for us. So if I had to guess, they probably just have like a Murderous Rider here. I'm attacking. So opponent takes two plus another four. Can use the ability. I could have played the troll first, then Yorvo would have picked up a counter and if they kill the Pelt Collector grows, but then I guess they would just kill Yorvo in response to the troll anyway. All right, Mayhem Devil plus uh, Fetch Lands, pretty strong. Looks like they have a uh, two damage effect. Maybe a uh, Chandra here, make two tokens. Yep. Well, that's gonna be hard to beat. Reaper attacks. So I can take three. Pelt Collector is going to die. Let's assume we draw a fourth land for Vivian. We can deal three to the Mayhem Devil. They lose one to the Reaper and then take three more from the attack and die. Well, we definitely put up a fight for being stuck on three. Voracious Hydra, that doesn't do enough. So I attack my opponents. I can assume they trade, maybe they're afraid of a pump spell. And then I can play 2-3 Hydra. So we're not technically dead on board, unless there's an instant or sorcery they can replay, which they don't. So I'm gonna block here, take four down to one, and then the 
Cauldron Familiar can kill us. Alright, GG's. So it's kind of crazy how if we did draw land in that last turn we still could have won. Alright, so we're on the play. We're seeing a bit of synergy here too between Fabled Passage and Evolution Sage. That can definitely come up. Although I'm definitely gonna sack one first just to get my Guardian out turn two. And then hopefully we can draw a fourth land. And I think I'm okay grabbing a forest here early in case we draw Yorvo. And then the second passage can get an island. Alright, so here the plan is turn 2 Guardian, turn 3 Sage, could also turn 3 Adapts, and then turn 4 Ghost Sage plus Fabled Passage to make a 6-6 Guardian. I've got a couple options. Opponent stays back, we did draw another untapped land. So, I guess I like just Adapting. And then next turn goes Sage plus Fabled Passage, or just plays Agana, which also works. Yeah, let's do that. And then probably want to adapt in their upkeep. I'm fine playing defense. I imagine if they had a removal spell, they would have killed the Guardian, instead no. Well, that's why we waited until their upkeep, so they would waste one mana in their turn. But I'm surprised they didn't just kill the Guardian. I guess they were trying to bait out the adapts, but at least we did it in their upkeep. So they must have drawn the spitter for the turn then. Alright, well this messes with our plan quite a bit, so I guess it worked. I can just play Zagana without drawing a card. It's still a pretty big roadblock for my opponent. And then it might be worth it to just play the Breeding Pool untapped, keep the Fabled Passages for the Evolution Sage, can go Zagana into Vivian, into Sage, plus a bunch of fetch lands. Troll is also quite good with Evolution Sage here. The play might still be Vivian, make a giant Zagana. The card we're most terrified of is a potential. Spitfire, which they can also give haste with the Torch Courier. So that's maybe a reason to hold Vivian in hand to kill the Spitfire as soon as they play it. Although there's always a chance we die to the Spitfire the turn they do play it, thanks to the Torch Courier. So I guess we could always kill the Torch Courier as well. But that leaves Vivian at low loyalty where they can burn it out, which doesn't seem great. So at the end of the day, I think I'm just going to Vivian plus. My heart beats in unison with the wild. No attacks. And then I'll just play the passage, but we don't have to sacrifice it yet to combine with Sage next turn. So if we can dodge a Spitfire, we should be okay. Second Cavalcade, it's not bad. So sequencing now is important. Play Sage. Fetch for a Forest, play Troll, and then play Fabled Passage. Seems okay. Because I don't think I want to put counters on Evolution Sage with Vivian's ability. So we'll play the troll. I mean, I could have maybe plussed and put counter on Sage, so that grows as well. 
could also ultimate, but I guess ultimating doesn't do a whole lot here. So maybe I should have put a counter on stage before fetching. I guess we'll do it now. And then just make both creatures large. All the proliferate action. Fabled Passage, definitely one of the cards that improved this deck over the mono green version, just because it's so great with uh, Sage. And now I feel comfortable sending in Zagana. Gotta end the game at some points. And our opponent explodes. Nice. Could have also been reasonable instead of plussing Vivian to just minus on Torch Courier again to avoid the whole Spitfire killing me situation. Because if we do the math, we could have been dead to Spitfire. Let's see, they go third lands, hasty Spitfire. They attack, so they've got one trigger from Spitter, two more from Cavalcades. So that's three, so that's nine, plus another two triggers from the Spitfire itself. So that's uh, 15, 16, 17 damage. So yeah, they could have killed us if they went land Spitfire, give it haste. So the play would have actually been to just, instead of plusing Vivian to make both creatures large, uh, to just minus on the Torch Courier after we proliferate it. Because given that they were stuck on two lands, it was even more likely that they had a Spitfire in hand. Alright, on the play. Um, we've got a bit of a gap at two or three. But on the play with double Pelt Collector, gotta keep and hope to draw something we can play before turn four. Temple of Silence. Maybe an Esper control deck. Hmm, this is tough. Could be greedy to keep both Vivians. Of course, we don't know if we're gonna draw another land. So probably get rid of a Vivian still. They're also somewhat likely to have more discard effects next turn. In which case I might actually just want to hang on to the Pelt Collector. Instead of having to decide again between Land and Vivian. So I'm just going to pass. Alright, nothing from our opponent, so we'll play Vivian. Could be a Murder Strider killing Vivian, but at least we'll get one activation. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. My, my. And then one of them could attack, but then he can pump and trade. I think we'll just hang back. Let's see if we have a Murder Strider here. Right, just to mortify, that's okay. And the next one we can go Pelt Collector into Troll. If they make me discard, probably just discard Pelt Collector. Sage could be nice. Probably still prefer playing Troll, just so we can have a 4-4 four -four to block the Bell Haunts. I suppose Evolution Sage also would have made a 4-4 four -four Pelt Collector, but the Troll's a lot safer with the built-in Hexproof. So we'll hang back. Is Mortify good and standard? It definitely seems like a playable card with all these powerful enchantments between Trail of Crumbs and Fires of Invention. 
doesn't get artifacts, which is also a big deal. Alright, we can do some fun things here. Don't see a reason to minus 5 yet, just gonna keep plussing. And it's interesting here. I can play the lands to get one proliferate trigger from Evolution Sage. I kind of want to plus to get a counter on it first, but then if they do have another Mortify, I don't get any value. So I think I'm supposed to just play the lands. And then um, we can plus Vivian. Or I can minus with a troll killing Bellhaunt. Doesn't seem super necessary. So how about I make a 6-6 six, six belt collector which can attack and keep troll on defense. And then where do I put the other counter? Maybe on the sage itself anyway. Or I can make a 7-7 seven, seven belt collector but that seems excessive. Seems fine. So, sequencing might seem weird, but we explained our reasoning. Even if they pump Fan Lurker, they can't trade for Pelt Collector. Not even sure what we want to search up with uh, Vivian if we get the chance. Maybe a disenchant. Well, now they can attack Vivian, I guess. I'm a couple lands short of getting Agent of Treachery to steal this. So I probably just get like a Brontodon. I mean, I could leave it in play. It's not really bothering me too much at the moment. And just keep plussing and growing my team. But we do have a backup Vivian. So maybe we just kill this now anyway. Let's take a look. Yeah, Brontodon seems fine. Could also get Ronas. Does it kill my opponents? Don't have any Trample outside of Pelt Collector. So probably not. A lot of good options for sure. That's one more arrow knocked. Can maybe afford to get a bit more aggressive. Because I don't care as much if they attack my Vivian now. And yeah, my opponent's gonna pack it in. All right, sweet. So yeah, overall, I've been pretty happy with the proliferate deck with the addition of Zagana. There's of course a bit of downside sometimes to Zagana. We have to play a couple lands that come into play tapped and that's gonna hurt us some games. Sometimes we gotta take two from Breeding Pool, which uh, also comes up. But it is a good excuse to play Fabled Passage, which is secretly very strong with Evolution Sage. So, didn't see the Great Henshin action in any of our games there, but uh, also a very important part of the deck. Can uh, sometimes play it quite early thanks to a big Yorvo. Zagana is also pretty beefy to help us uh, play a cheap Hench. And then Hench plus Growth Chamber Guardian, of course, we all know is great, as we get to search up more Guardians. Guardian in general, just... Uh, is quite synergistic in the deck with Vivian being able to put counters on it to search up more Guardians as well. And um, yeah, the Voracious Hydra, I'm not quite sure if it's uh, supposed to be here. It's kind of a 3-drop at the very least in this deck, sometimes you can play it for more. But um, we're not really a ramp deck, so the Hydra is usually on the smaller end of the spectrum. It is just like a cheap answer to something like an Innkeeper which we really want to get rid of as soon as possible, and otherwise in blue-green there's not a ton of great options, and it is still a creature with a plus-one counter that synergizes with Zagana. 
So it's still okay, but I could see something else being better. Also tried the Wildborn Preserver at 2, which has a bit of synergy, but that felt a bit too slow, and we didn't often have the mana to put additional plus one counters on it. Could potentially stretch the blue splash even further, try cards like Brazen Borrower, but um, being double blue to cast is pretty tricky, because we can't really afford a ton of blue lands with Yorvo in the deck. And then Nissa's great. I don't know if we need more than two copies. It's usually a card we only want to draw one off in specific situations. Uh, when, for example, we're facing a more controlling deck to recover from sweepers. Can, of course, still be fine in other situations, but we're not really taking full advantage of Nissa as we only have the Voracious Hydra to really benefit from all the extra mana. So, yeah, overall pretty happy with the deck. And then the sideboard, of course, can still be tinkered with. If you're playing best of three, you can just keep the more important... Uh, search targets with uh, Vivian, for example, something to get rid of artifacts and enchantments, like the uh, Thrashing Brontodon, one of Agent is kind of sweet to maybe steal an opposing Planeswalker or some other permanent, and then like one thing to maybe help you close out the game between Andre's Forerunners or maybe uh, Ronas is good enough, since if you can get Trample from Zagana, you don't really need the Andres Forerunners as much, and Tronos is a bit more efficient. The other cards are also sometimes uh, useful, like the Ceratops against Counterspell decks, but for the most part, you're just going to keep plussing Vivian, so you don't often minus 5. It's usually just to get rid of a problematic permanent from the opponent that you otherwise can't interact with. And uh, yeah, then you could just uh, figure out the sideboard that you want to bring in best of 3. So that's the deck. But yeah, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.